are you working on an important piece of text, such as a thesis, and you want to make sure that your writing is original? Well, in such a case, it would be handy to have a little tool to check uh, if your text comes across as plagiarized compared to other ones. So in this video, let's build, have a go at building a little plagiarism detector directly in Python. And that might become a nice and handy tool to check for plagiarism. So here we are in Visual Studio Code in our virtual environment with one Python file, and I've already brought in some text files for testing. And we're going to use some machine learning techniques um, in just a few lines of code to get this done. And once we're done, we'll be able to load an assignment or a piece of text and then compute the similarity to see if uh, the text has been copied from one another. So we're going to be using uh, scikit. Let's see if we can install that. Here, first of all. And I can maybe talk a little bit about how this analysis of text will go as it's installing. So we first need to convert our textual data into numbers. And we'll do that turning it into an array of numbers in a process known as word embedding. It follows some algorithms that we will take built in from scikit and then that ends up with words being represented as positions in space. And for the detection of similarity, we'll use the basic concept of a vector dot product to determine how closely two texts are similar by computing the value of cosine similarity between vector representations of the text assignments. Okay. So let's build, uh, start building. We've got the package installed. We know we want to access the text files, so we might as well um, import OS and then the essential parts from scikit. So from sklearn, we can take feature extraction. Uh, there we go. And then from the metrics module, we'll find the cosine similarity uh, method. So we're going to use this TFID vectorizer to do this word embedding uh, that I mentioned. And then we're going to use the cosine similarity method to just compute the plagiarism with these vectors. Okay, so we'll, let's load the files. So we'll say sample files are um, each document for the documents in a list that gets generated when we run the command operating system list directory, so the local um, directory that this file is in. And then we're going to limit it to only files ending in txt. We could imagine there's other files that aren't text and we would want to ignore them. So we can say only if the document has at its end uh, .txt ending. Okay, now we're going to get a bit uh, advanced right away. We're going to use lambda functions to convert the text to arrays of numbers. So we can vectorize. We take lambda. Take it to an array, and then we compute the similarity. By taking the lambda between two documents, pass 
everything then into the cosine similarity method we've already magically imported from scikit machine learning library. So we've got these lambda methods here, and then we can say that the vectors are whatever comes out of when we vectorize the sample files. build our plagiarism detection method now. So results blank at the beginning. We grab on to the s vectors variable that we have to find outside of this method. Take a sample, and in each text vector component in the S vectors list we have, we take a copy look at the current index from that new vectors um, copy that we've just made. So sample B text vector B in the vectors. So now we're taking another one and it's not definitely not going to be that uh, we've removed the current index. Um, so we're going to look at only the other files to compare against. Similarity score will just be what we pass to the similarity lambda method um, of the text vector A compared to the text vector B. And we also want to pass in the, the rhythm first document. And then the sample pair will be whatever is sorted sorted list between um, sample A and sample B. And the score will be the from that pair, the zeroth element, the first element, B, um, and then the sim score itself. It's not a method, we're just assigning assigning this set of values. Then we're going to say results get added to that score. Once we've cycled through all of the uh, text and their similarities to each other, we can return the results. And then we might as well um, get it all printed. So we get the uh, results as an array, as a list, and now we'll just print all of that. So let us, let us see how this runs. It's got a lot to write. Where do we get stuck? Okay, so we're getting values, it's not erroring out, and we're seeing the comparisons between them, which is good. 
but then we see that the value is always the same, which doesn't seem even remotely feasible if the files are different, which indeed they are. Um, so it is running through all the four text files in our sample folder. Yeah. Let's return. All right, the missing step was actually reading the files, not just getting the files. So we need to um, take the files that we've added as a list into sample files and then iterate through that with the list comprehension. And now we get the contents in a list itself. So we'll actually be comparing the contents of the files instead of just the files names and, and the uh, metadata about them. Um, so we will update the vectors to come from the contents itself. And let's see what that does. Ha ha, pretty marvelous. So what we would expect is that files one and two are very close to each other and three and four are very close to each other and otherwise they're not. And that's exactly what we're seeing here with these scores that we get for each pair. Great, so there you go. This is uh, leaning heavily, of course, on algorithms, um, the, the vectorization algorithm. That's just a black box for us as well as the cosine similarity. Um, but there you go, quick tutorial on how to get yourself checking against plagiarism if you've got some corpus of data to check against. Now, I suppose as a next step for this kind of project, you might want to plug into some kind of large corpus of potential uh, texts, because now we're comparing against for example, different theses or exam papers, essays. Uh, so you could pass all your students' essays through a checker like this to get a score and then investigate more closely. But um, how do you know that your thesis, for example, is, which is meant to be quite unique? Of course, the professional tools that are out there have in their stores a huge database of texts. So if you were to commercialize this little project, Maybe that's where you'd need to go, but that's a topic for another video. Thanks for watching.